Hello YouTube, this is Dr. Ron W. Satz, founder and chair of the International Society of Unified Science and president of TransPower Corporation, a commercial and custom software manufacturing and certified systems engineering company. I work as a mechanical and systems engineer and as a theoretical physicist. I worked with Dewey B. Larson, the developer of the reciprocal system, from 1965 until his death in 1990. What I've done is to make the theory computational. So as usual today, in the screencast, we'll talk about the reciprocal system briefly on three different topics. Iron in the universe, the nonsense of gravitational waves, and an explanation of, for the temperature of the sun's corona. So let's look at the first one here, iron in the universe. We'll go to the sciencedaily.com site. And this article starts off with by saying, by detecting an even distribution of iron throughout a massive galaxy cluster, astrophysicists can tell the 10 billion year old story of how exploding stars and black holes sow the early cosmos with heavy elements. Now this is a mythology of modern physics that supernovae create the heavy elements. Uh, this is quite nonsensical. The atoms are actually moving apart from one another on the expanding side coming out. Now let's just uh, jog down here a little bit and see if there's anything else. It's, the caption of the picture says, the universe underwent a turbulent youth 10 to 12 billion years ago. Again, that's theory, not fact. Stars formed at very high rates, but many of these newborn stars died quickly in supernova explosions that produced the chemical elements beyond helium. Again, pure theory, not factual. And it says here, the combined energy from numerous supernova explosions and black hole jets created powerful winds that blew these elements out of the galaxies into intergalactic space. <laughs> All right, well, this is nonsense. So let's go back. This is from my original WordPress blog post. What I'm doing with these YouTube videos is transducing the work from WordPress into YouTube. So actually, no. Atom building is going on all the time within and between galaxies. The reason for this is that the constant influx of cosmic rays, which come from the cosmic or inverse sector, and the subsequent absorption of neutrinos, which increases atomic number. So study the reciprocal system and prove it for yourself. So this is how heavy elements actually form. They form in intergalactic space and within galaxies as well. But it's a, it's a slow build-up process. The atoms absorb neutrinos, which eventually transmutes them into atoms of higher elements. The heavy elements are actually destroyed in a supernova explosion. In fact, the heaviest elements in a star are used for uh, fission, which actually creates the energy of the star, not fusion. Okay, let's go into topic two here, the nonsense of gravitational waves. Most conventional scientists now think that gravitational waves have been found, but again, this is wrong. It says here again, I, I'm going with Science Daily, which is a, a good source for the conventional physics and scientific news. It says here, supermassive black holes, every large galaxy's got one, but here's a real conundrum. How did they grow so big? A new article puts the front-running ideas about the growth of supermassive black holes against observational data, a limit on the strength of gravitational waves. So let's just continue on down here. It says, gravitational waves distort space, altering the regular signals from pulsars. Oh, well, that's kind of funny. And I don't think there's anything else worth repeating here. Uh, there's quite a bit of material in here. It's, you know, you can read it if you like. But I'm going to go back. And uh, so, our prediction, that is, the proponents of the reciprocal system, is that no gravitational waves will be found here non existent. Gravitation depends on the space-time concentration of and space-time separation of physical existence. Nothing is transmitted from one body to another. And how, how can, you know, the theory is that the transmission takes place at the speed of light, but 
These galaxies are way, way, way too big for this. The so-called gravitational waves that scientists have claimed to have found are actually uh, non-mass, non-charged electrons and positrons, which are created in explosions. These uh, massless, chargeless particles can create sort of a pressure, just like photons can create a pressure. And that explains the small deflections that these uh, the so-called gravitational wave detectors have found. So again, gravitational waves are part of the fabric of modern physics, but it's dead wrong. Now let's move on to the last topic for today. The explanation for the temperature of the sun's corona. Now, the conventional physicists explain this as follows. It says here, scientists found evidence that magnetic waves in a polar coronal hole contain enough energy to heat the corona and moreover they also deposit most of their energy at sufficiently low heights for the heat to spread throughout the corona. The observations have helped to answer a 70 year old solar physics conundrum about the unexplained extreme temperature of the sun's corona known as the coronal heating problem. Okay, well, the reciprocal system has an explanation, of course. Now, my theoretical physics mentor, Dewey Larson, wrote this in his Astrophysics Masterpiece, Universe of Motion, page 274. Quote, These x-rays are believed to originate in the stellar coronas, and it has therefore been concluded that, quote, temperatures of a million to ten million degrees, and that would be, uh, actually reference 228 there, exist in these coronas. Here again, the existence of such temperatures is excluded by basic thermal principles. Consequently, the x-rays cannot be produced thermally in these locations. But as in the galactic situation, the x-ray production is easily explained on the basis of leakage of intermediate speed matter. Now, intermediate speed matter is that with the speed between 1 and 2c which is really in three-dimensional time, not three-dimensional space. But it leaks out from the interiors of the stars, followed by a return to the low-speed range in the coronas. So it drops down in energy emitting those x-rays. So that's the real source for the explanation for the temperature, the huge temperature of the sun's corona. And that wraps up today's presentation for the reciprocal system. Study it and prove it for yourself. The simplest possible treatment is my work, The Unmysterious Universe. The most comprehensive work is Existence and Interactions, a computation treatise of the reciprocal system, the true theory of everything, and my two database modules, the reciprocal system microcosmos module and the reciprocal system macrocosmos module. All these are available from Transpower Corporation and uh, or Amazon.com. Thanks for your attention.